Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. My name is Nick, and in this video I'm going to attempt to capture a full image of one object using three different filters over the course of six hours using the Rasa 8 from Bortle 9, Chicago. Can I do it? Let's find out. So I'm really excited tonight to be imaging an object that is new to me, the California Nebula in the constellation of Perseus. This is one that I've always admired images of, but have not had a chance to image myself. So tonight is hopefully the night. Now we have a relatively short period of time to do it, only about six hours tonight from the time the nebula is high enough for me to begin imaging it, right around 8 p.m until around 2 a.m. when we've got some clouds that are supposed to be moving in. So hopefully in that six hour time period, it's gonna be nice and clear. We won't get any uh, clouds off the lake or anything. Uh, we will see uh, how that goes, but it's gonna be, uh, gonna be fun to uh, test this out and see just how much data we can get using the RASA. Now this is an F2 telescope, so we're able to shoot a lot of data in a limited period of time. So I'm really gonna be relying on that. Hopefully we've got a presentable image tonight using just uh, about five, maybe six hours of integration time. I want to show you a little bit more about this object in Telescopius, how I'm planning to frame it up, and really what I'm hoping to capture with the California Nebula. All right, so the California Nebula NGC 1499. What do we got here? What are we looking for as we frame it up in Telescopius? Well, you can see here, this is the sensor size, the field of view for my ASI 1600 mm Pro, uh, paired up with my Rasa 8. And you can see the nebulosity there. We're actually going to boost this up uh, quite a bit just to see the full extent. There's some fainter nebulosity back here, and also some extending out towards the bright star here, which I'm interested in getting. In a previous video in my Mosaics Part 1, I talked about uh, planning mosaics and importing those coordinates into the ASI Air. Uh, and a lot of people had asked actually about the rotation of the camera. And that's done in here. And you can see, you can change this rotation like this. Now, I generally don't do a lot of detailed camera rotation with the Rasa because it's a bit of a cumbersome process, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Uh, so that's really the reason that I generally just go for either 90 degrees uh, on the rotation or zero. And that way I'm able to just eyeball it on the Rasa as the, uh, the camera is rotated and be good to go. If it was something like I needed rotated 15 degrees, or uh, even 45, yeah, I could probably get it close, but as far as getting that exact framing and then having to plate solve and then go back to it just to get it perfect, um, it's a little bit too much of a thing with the Rasa. So that's why I didn't really mention it in that video. However, it is possible to plan a rotation here and also find out what your rotation is as you plate solve in the ASI Air. So for this object, actually, I'm gonna uh, switch the camera to zero. This is gonna be a little bit of a longer view on the nebula. I also like how it kind of traces from one corner down to the other. Now there is quite a bit of nebulosity back in here, so I'm gonna keep that framing, oh, just about like this, just in case we pick a lot of that up with somewhat limited integration time here. I'm not sure we're actually gonna get a lot of that, but who knows, we'll see. There's actually some interesting dark nebulosity as well lying in front of that fainter area. So I'm hoping to pick that up, but we will see. So this is our framing as we've planned this out. I'm going to copy this CSV. So that's the coordinate that I want to center on. If I tell the ASI Air to center on the California Nebula, I don't know, it's gonna be something like this or here. It's not necessarily gonna be the exact framing that I want. And I'm pretty particular on this. So we're gonna frame it up right there. So we've got that copied and I'll import that into the ASI Air. For right now though, we need to match our camera position angle to what we've planned here in Telescopius. So let's do that on the Rasa. All right, so currently I have the ASI 1600 mm Pro attached to the Rasa. As such, this is 90 degrees position angle in Telescopius. So now I need to rotate it to zero degrees, which is just perpendicular off of this. We can rotate it either perpendicular from this uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't actually matter. But uh, first, we need to take off these cables, which are running in front of the objective lens here on the Rasa. So I keep these attached using this just Velcro strips that are attached together, and that holds them nice and tight against the outside of the camera, so that way they're not uh, interfering with the light path. Now I've also got this 3D printed 
cable router here with some electrical tape, which occasionally does get a little bit loose. So we're gonna make sure that's uh, nice and cleaned up for imaging tonight. Uh, just to make sure we're clear as we're rotating this around, I'm gonna uh, remove that and we can swing this around to the side. I've actually got it to a nice length there where I can hang it there. All right, so now all we have to do is loosen the retaining ring here and we're going to rotate it to either this side or this side. I think I'm actually gonna do this side here just based on how those cables come around. I think that'll be easier. Now, of course, if you have a non-Rasa telescope or maybe a non-Hyperstar, uh, you're gonna be uh, uh, having a much easier time with this camera rotation. You can have a camera rotator on there and uh, it wouldn't matter where your cables are coming off of the camera. But in the case of the Rasa, it really does. I'm gonna tighten this in here and make sure that is locked down at exactly 90 degrees, perfect. This is our filter slider in here. So that's all ready to go for imaging. All right, let's bring back the cables with the router here. And we'll plug in the power, USB 3.0 for camera data and also the guiding camera. And once that's all secure, we can replace the Velcro strap. And we're all set. And now that we have that all squared away, let's head outside. All right, so the clear night materialized just as forecasted. We're gonna see how long it lasts. So we started here with the hydrogen alpha filter and then we'll move to the sulfur two. We're gonna do probably about an hour on that and we'll get as much time as possible, basically until the clouds move in on oxygen three. And just right now, we've got some live stacking going on of the California Nebula. And we can see here, let's see, we are 18 frames in. Let's take a look. It's uh, pretty impressive, I think. Here we have it. Excellent. Checking on the any haloing we've got. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, these new Botter filters definitely living up to the hype, especially with the H-alpha. Very little haloing around the bright stars, and that's something I can address very easily. We're getting some of the dark nebulae uh, standing up against the brighter emission areas here. Actually, let me adjust the histogram a little bit. We'll bring this in. Ah, fantastic. Looks like the guiding uh, there, a little bit of a wind gust, or I don't think I bumped it, so. <laughs> uh, maybe a slight bit there, but overall these stars are looking nice and round. Uh, no ignored frames so far, and the wind is getting less and less as the night goes on here. So this is, this is looking really nice. Now, of course, the hydrogen alpha is gonna be the strongest signal of the night that we have here, but uh, hey, this is a great start and it's looking very clean as well. So that's gonna make for a nice luminance layer when we layer that over the SHO integration. So uh, I'm excited so far. We'll see how the rest of the night goes. Well, that's it for me tonight. I'm gonna to stop the time lapse here and go on inside with the scope and get a few hours of uh, beauty sleep before the kids wake up. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And also don't forget to subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography. Plenty of awesome content coming your way from the light polluted, but uh, ultimately able to be photographed skies of Chicago. Clear skies, we'll see you next time.